if you started all over, who would be your first hire and who actually was your first hire? So this is both for you, Matthew and Peter. Peter would have been my first hire. <laughs> um, so let's see. Uh, when I first got started, so I had the benefit of coming, like we were buying and selling houses. So there were there were essentially three of us that were kind of like came over from buying and selling houses over to the ear. Uh, I'm the only one uh, that's left. Uh, what I, my first like uh, real hire would, I would say would be, um, kind of like a CFO or somebody to handle. handle. Uh, so the way I would think about that is like, what are you good at? And then what are you weak at? And then I would focus on somebody complimenting your weaknesses. And I still do that. If you see the people that are closest to me today, folks like Graham, um, our, uh, Graham who's our president, our COO, uh, Matt, um, all of these people that are around me are very detail oriented, very much finishers because I'm a great starter and big picture and Graham can get down in the details. So that's the way I thought about it. And my actual first hire, uh, a lot of people know him and a uh, great time to plug him because he's still in the industry is uh, Phil Mazur, who was uh, our CFO for a long time. And now he runs a fractional CFO business. So uh, we're still great friends with him. And I think he does a great job. He was your first hire? No, not really the first hire. He was the first hire for Matthew's weakness, I think is what he's saying. Yeah, I would uh, say like first, or, uh, you know, other than just kind of like maybe like leasing agents or something okay, like that. Got yeah, it. Was, yeah. Okay, got it. So our first hire was a guy by the name of Greg and he did everything. He was just like an admin assistant. He did showings. He answered the phone. He helped prepare leases. Um, and I remember way back, um, I had an executive coach I was working with at the time and he pushed me to make that first hire way earlier than I would have. He was like, Hey, you need to hire somebody. And I know you feel like you're not ready, but this is the move you need to make. Um, and that was excellent advice. I, I really like have this clear memory of it because I was worried about, you know, how are we going to pay him? Is there going to be enough for him to do? And are they going to do everything as good as I, as I do it, right? All the classic fears you have as a small business owner. And that was great advice. And it's probably still, you know, resonates like, um, the value of getting something done at 85% by someone else versus hundred percent by you. It's a, it's a, like a magnifier and a lever that you can pull on to grow your business and scale your operations and yourself. If I was starting all over, I mean, it's hard. Like that was probably the right thing for me to do at that age with the maturity level that I had with the finances that I had at the time. If I was to like start a brand new property management company in some other state today, knowing what I know with sort of where I'm at, I would pull in kind of like you guys were talking about earlier, I would bring in someone who scares me, right? Like I would try and hire like Graham or like, you know, someone who's like run a huge organization and is way, you know, way experienced and skilled at what I need. And then I would just let them build the team under them. And I would give them like a direction and some guidelines and say, go tell me what you need. Um, kind of a cop out answer, but <laughs> that's what like, CEOs do at big companies, right? They're not working 80 times harder than a small business CEO. They just bring in people who really, really, really know how to do that thing and then let them run. And uh, I think Peter hit on something that's really important. Like we're going to get into like digging into processes and where to put that and, you know, how, wh what, what spots and, you know, what does that look like? But one of the things I wrote down as a note is that hiring great people fill a lot of process holes. So as you scale, your processes will become like, I think of them as like a pipe. And as you start to push more water down them, uh, you start to see where the leaks are. And then you can either fix that same pipe, pipe or tear the pipe out and build a brand new one. Um, that's the way I think about processes. But one of the great things about great people like Graham is when, when processes are breaking down, they can hold the pipe together long enough for you to build the next pipe or, or to plug, plug the holes. And so um, I, I wouldn't say that it's a great question because these things are really connected, having great people with great process 
is super important. And and great people will make you look good when your processes aren't great. Could not agree with that more. And I've made the mistake of over indexing on process in the past. You know, and anyone who knows me is probably not shocked to hear that. <laughs> but um a bad employee will my business partner has a great saying. He he says, bad employees always find new ways to be bad. No matter how carefully you write the process and no matter how many like edge cases you try and incorporate in the process, they'll just continually break it and find ways and complain about it and won't get it done. And it's late and like, you can't fix that with process. You just have a bad employee and conversely, a great employee will pull a rabbit out of a hat. I mean, they're no process, bad process, duplicate process. They're going to figure it out. They're going to fix it. They're going to get it done. So people are at least as important as process mm. and i'm a big process guy so for me to say that like it took some maturity and learning for me to get to that point yeah. actually i think we, we mentioned how good emeth was uh i actually think emeth tries to lay out the scenario where we can build everything like donald's where we can essentially you know have the lowest common denominator managing that process but a scaling company, which is kind of what we're talking about here, a scaling company needs great people with great process to be successful because it is so disruptive to grow a business. Sorry, Grandma, I cut you off. No, that's fine. I was going to ask, what was the maturity level of the finance organization or like your level, like when you hired Phil to fill that need around accounting, finance, like did he come in and like write process from from scratch or was there already something that he took over? Like, was it so painful for you to do that, that you're just like, Oh my God, I got to just like hire somebody to do it for me. Or was there already something there that he kind of like took over and was documented and then he like improved upon? So, um, so for some context, one of my old partners was a CPA. So she did a really good job of kind of like setting up the initial processes, right. To get us to a couple hundred homes when Phil came on, she I bought the business from her and uh, some other partners uh, in May of 2013. And when then so she left and then I kind of had like this uh, kind of bookkeeper in the middle. And that bookkeeper, as the business continued to grow, it just like the processes needed to grow and the bookkeeper was unable to like keep up um, and wasn't talented enough to essentially keep up with all that. So I was stepping in. This is about the time Spencer started. And uh, we switched from one property management software to another. I manually did that. It was probably the worst time of my life. Uh, and then um, and then that's when Phil, that's when I decided I need to spend some money and get Phil in here. And we looked for a CFO for about three to six months and found Phil. Yeah. So that was around 2013 is when Matthew bought the company from his partners. Phil came on uh, probably April of 2015. So he had almost two years. That was a long 18 months. Part, yeah. Part of the reason why I was thinking about that was finding the right time to essentially put like a lower cost resource in place of you yourself doing the process and kind of that balance between knowing what you're good at you know, knowing what you're not good at, potentially solving for pain. Okay, this is not something I'm good at. This is not a process I enjoy doing. Maybe it's not a good process because you just kind of hate it. Um, and finding, you know, because often, you know, you found somebody who is probably more competent at you. And Peter, you talked about, you know, the good employee, bad employee, or, you know, the right person for that seat. Um, but the reality is that in a lot of owner-operated property management businesses, like you are very competent, and the person that you're putting in place to do that instead of you does not have as many reps as you doing it. And they may be less competent than you at doing it. And so writing that process, like handing off something that is like pretty fully formed to a, uh, to a more junior person versus hiring better than needed, um, stepping into that situation yeah. where they're going to like, you know, create from scratch and really overall something. Those are like two very different decisions, I feel like. And so um, one requires a lot more documentation and thought versus like, I'm just going to go out, overpay, maybe even over hire for this and expect them to fix it from the beginning. Those are like two very different things. 